everyone and welcome back to Fire by Nature and today um, I will be preparing how to, showing you how to thread the, the shafts and uh, slay the weed uh, with this weed beater part. Um, so back here um, as you can see the threads are being wound on so they end up here if you're wondering for rigid heddle weavers out there. Um, rigid heddle looms don't usually have these so well, they don't have them at all. So this is called the rattle. And basically what this is, is this helps space out the warp so that when you wind on, they're not all tangled and bundled up. And this is also what these threads are for. So this folds the cross so that they don't mix and go over each other. Um, so Luet looms conveniently have these already attached to the looms, but most looms, you have to buy a separate rattle kit and but uh you can uh tie it on to the top of your loom so um i can uh so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to take the rubber bands that i put on here off Now I got the thing off, so I'm going to take the threads out of the rattle. Um, but what I'm going to do is, what I will do though, is I'm going to leave these threads in because these threads keep all the threads aligned and in order when you're threading the heddles and the shafts. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to the front of the loom and then uh, we can start threading the heddles. Okay, so now I've moved to the front of the loom and this is the beater. So you can see there's little dents here. Um, so I'm going to push that forward so we can get to the shafts. So um, on my video when I showed um, me unboxing it and showing you the the final product all put together someone commented and said um that she's not familiar with shafts um because she's on a rigid heddle loom so with rigid heddle looms it's one uh it's one heddle you also use to be but with these type of looms you have two shafts with things called heddles so heddles basically are these little things that have eyes in them that you use your threading hook and you put through and then you can lift the you can lift the shafts by pulling on the on the toggles up here so these control the shafts now what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to push all these shafts to the side okay so actually i'm going to move some of them out of the way since I'm not using all of the ink on the beater. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to kind of finger comb the threads to make sure they're not tangled and messed up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut here. I'm going to do is I'm going to hold these threads right here make sure these don't fall off and then I'm going to take the third first thread and pull it here and then I'll let these threads down so I'm going to take one heddle and then I'm going to take my hook and thread it Okay, another thing you can do is if your reed can go close enough, you can also do it all in one. 
So basically here I'm going to take the hook, thread it through and pull it. So then I'm going to take my next petal and find the next thread in the bundle. Yep. So that would be this one. So I'm going to grab this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the next one and thread it through the hook and the bead at the same time. So then after that, I'm going to pull that through. And that's basically how you thread the loom. Um, so I'm going to do it. I'll leave the camera going to film me doing it for a couple more times. And then I'll thread the rest off camera. Because this is a very lengthy process and I don't think you guys want to watch a more than half an hour video. Okay, so again, I'm going to take my hook, this is the next slot in the reed. I'm going to put it through the eye of the heddle, through the hole where the thread goes through. Then I'm going to hook the next thread on and then pull it through. I'll show you one more time and then I will be back. So I'm going to take the next petal. Of course, that happens. Okay. I'm going to take the next petal. So that would be this, the shaft, this shaft. I'm going to take it through. I'm going to put my hook through the eye and pull it through. So that is basically how you um, thread your loom. Now, after I finish threading everything, um, I will be back to show you the last few and see you when I finish. Hey guys and welcome back. Um, I finished laying the reed and threading the heddles. So um, I didn't leave any because I leave anything to do to show you guys. I'm sorry, um, but I was kind of in a rush because I'm traveling soon. And I kind of want to get this finished before I go. So um, essentially, what I did was I took two a group of two warp strand of not two but two groups of warp strands, then I tied it together like this. And then these sticks here are just cross uh, to hold the cross here. And then, yeah. So now I can start weaving. Um, first I need to wind some bobbins. So I'm gonna be doing that first. I'll be right back. Okay, so now I have my bobbin of dog hair as you can see is pretty furry um so before i start i'm going to weave a little bit of plain weave like this so that i just have the header so basically as you can see move the camera a little bit okay there so i'm going to lift one of these and as you can see that this is a shed so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna beat down like that. And then I'm going to pass the little thing of thread. I'm gonna change my shed again, then beat. Then I'm gonna pass it back back through the shed. Change it and beat. So as you can see, so this is how I, this is how you weave um, the letter. So I've woven a band of plain weave selvage, so now I'm going to snap this off and tuck the end through. Okay, so the 
this is my shuttle. So this is called a boat shuttle. And then we also have what's called a stick shuttle. So this is the stick shuttle and this is the boat shuttle. So with the boat shuttle, you have a bobbin that goes here, which is what we're gonna to use today. And then with the stick shuttle, you just wind the yarn on. So now I'm just gonna take um, a little bit of the yarn off from here and thread it through the hole. I'm going to pass this shuttle. So you want to make sure that the hole here is facing towards the fabric. I'm going to pull it out a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to tuck the end in. And then as you can see, you have I have these uh, floating, I have these threads way past these, and this is so that I can create two other selvages so that um, there's fringe all around. So, I'm going to change the shed and the feet. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass underneath these side threads, change the shed and feet. I'm going to pass my shuttle again. Change the threads and be. So as you can see, this technique, this type of loom is very manual because you have to change the thread. Um, and with turtle looms, so the big four looms that you see, for example, in Colonial Williamsburg or places like that, where they have the treadles, which are the foot pedals that you do like this on, those have some rigs and uh, pulleys at the top of the loom so that changes the shed. So with these, with the table looms, you have to manually change the toggles. Now I'm gonna pass the shuttle again, and then change my shed and beat. And as you can see, the thread is lashing onto the side, so that's how you, and then when you take off the loom, you pull these threads out, and then you cut these so that it becomes a fringe. So I'm gonna do a couple more, and then um, that'll be it for today. So if you are curious, um, about this dog hair and if you're a new subscriber then I will link the video where I spin this yarn um, so um, so you can watch how I made this yarn and how I processed it and then I will also link the video where I unboxed it and we'll link the loom itself and all the materials that I'm using here but um the bobbin my brother 3D printed. He made himself. So as you can see you can you get into a rhythm of, of, of doing it. And it just takes lots of coordination and practice. So yeah, that is it for today i hope you enjoyed this video and this is the final product so you can see there's a variation of color and i hope you enjoyed this video um if you haven't already and if you're a new subscriber if you're a new a viewer please subscribe and i would love to hear your comments um so about that we are almost to uh 200 subscribers and i will be having a special video so i want to have a q a um but um so if you have any questions tips or tricks you want me to do um then please i would love to hear your comments um and then you could get a chance to be uh 
get a shout out in the video and I will do that technique in that video. Um, so please make sure to get that in before we hit 200 subscribers and I'll see you next time. Bye.